hey hi friends uh, welcome back again this is the second part of the introductory video uh, related to SAP sales and distribution in the first part uh, if you had seen my video uh, you would have understood um, why why do companies require an ERP what is an ERP and why why SAP ERP specifically so all these things I had explained in my first video if you did not get a chance to have a look at that kindly go through my first video on my video channel on the on my youtube channel so the sap sd vlogger is the channel that i'm referring to so this is the second video of the introductory session so i'm going to take uh, two introductory videos so this is the second one once that is done uh, i'll directly jump into uh, the complex business processes and i'll be directly I won't be going through the basics like I won't be telling you how to configure a company how to um, set up the enterprise structure and all the stuff so I'm not going to go through that but in case someone requires that then I could even get in touch with uh, I mean go into that area as well but before that I would uh, like uh, I would directly jump on to certain scenarios which most people might not be aware <laughs> so I'll be explaining you the business process first and then the technical configuration required in SAP to achieve or to carry out that particular process in the system. So this is regarding the next videos that I'm going to upload. But yeah, coming back to this video, introduction video. So in the previous section, I explained what is an ERP? Why does a company implement ERP? What is it required for? <coughs> And how ERP or uh, an SAP ERP helps a company uh, increase its profits and uh, take important decisions, and it helps how it helps the top management in taking uh, very critical decisions in cases. So, coming back to this video, um, as I told you in my previous video, I'll be uh, explaining you what is the sales cycle how does the sales cycle go on in a sales uh, scenario like let's say there is a company and it wants to sell sell something so it every company has its has a particular sales process which is common to all so that sales process I'd like to explain so that you get an idea of uh, so uh, and that sales process I'd like to coordinate uh, correlate with the SAP uh, sales cycle so once you understand the sales process, uh, I would uh, even try to tell you how uh, the sales cycle happens in SAP as well. So, <clears throat> so as you had uh, learned or as I had explained in the previous session, uh, SAP uh, ERP in SAP ERP we try to replicate the structure of the company as it is in the SAP system. So why do we do that? It's because we need to. Uh, record each and every important financial important or financial transactions that goes on in a company daily so each of these transactions are to be recorded in SAP only then would you be able to extract reports from the system unless you have the data or the database of the daily activities that are being taken uh, place in the company you cannot have reports uh, generated out of the system so it is mandatory so like many of uh, the people who work in I mean specifically in production companies who are SAP implemented or if there is a salesperson in a production company and um, if there is SAP implemented in that company the company mandates them to have every single order pinned in or typed into the system before he actually processes that order so at every step he is required to enter the details of the orders that he receives from his customers so so the requirement to have everything uh, jotted down into the system SAP system is to record each of the important transactions that happen daily for your company and due because of this recording of each transactions each important transactions that are happening in the company the SAP uh, database has certain data from which reports could be extracted and which could be used by the senior management team to have a, a bird's eye view of how the business is going on at the moment 
and how is the company performing and what decisions should be taken in order to improve its performance <clears throat> so um, people along with the sales cycle today I would even like to explain you um, <clears throat> Uh, what would you what would be your role when you start working as a SAP consultant so usually uh, you won't get uh, usually these days most of the companies have already implemented SAP so getting a scratch implementation is uh, is a rare case yeah it can happen but it is a rare case that you might come across but usually what happens is that the company has implemented SAP in one of its production units or in one of its uh, geographies like let's say there is a multinational company with company which is spread across US UK geographies so it has implemented SAP in its US plant and they want to follow the same process of implementation in its other plant as well so this process of implementing um, SAP in its other parts uh, in its other regions of the same company or other plant of the same company is is called as the rollout so you would come across rollout projects or else you would even come across uh, development projects wherein uh, SAP has been implemented over there already and uh, people are trying to enhance the functionalities that are available or they can even be upgrade projects like let's say most of the implementations were done when SAP R3 version was released but later on the version has gone up to ECC 5.0 and ECC 6.0 which is being used now so now <clears throat> there has been uh, um, a requirement of upgrade projects as well because SAP is recommending all of its customers or clients to have SAP the latest version of EC, uh, SAP ERP to be implemented so it's the ECC 6.0 so you would come across such projects these days so getting a scratch implementation is rare so so first let me talk about what job profile would you have um, so basically being a, being an SAP consultant means that you have thorough, thorough knowledge of the sales process that goes on across industries so every industry has its own sales process so depending upon the product they manufacture depending upon the type of service they provide the sales process differs in fact uh, differs in the sense it is the baseline is same like you sell something you go and pitch your product to the customer or your service to the customer the customer um, um, gets I mean the customer likes your service uh, I mean likes the way you have pitched your service then he might you know ask for uh, some samples or some sample service uh, for you to deliver based upon the sample service or the sample products that you have provided to the customer he'll decide whether to go for you as a vendor or not so this is how uh, the sales cycle works so once he is agreed then I mean the documentation parts come part come into picture he gives you a purchase order and so on and so forth and finally once the product is delivered to the customer you bill the customer so after billing and then finally make the customer would make the payment and once the payment is done the sales cycle ends over there so you could even uh, pitch him for another sales order or another business uh, so the salesperson will again go to the same customer and ask him whether do you want the product again and so on and so forth so this is how the sales cycle happens in general so basically I'm just going to pinpoint certain important uh, milestones or important things that happen in a sales cycle because they are interrelated to the SAP sales cycle okay the same process the same process that goes on in real-time business is mapped into the SAP system so so the sales cycle that is going on in real time would be the same sales cycle in SAP only thing is that you need to enter certain data into the SAP system when you are at that particular level or that particular stage of the sales cycle so coming back to the work that you'll be doing as a consultant so before going to the understanding the job profile um, there are certain stages and there are certain kind of uh, implementation projects that come up or the projects that come up are divided into different uh, categories so firstly usually you get SAP projects 
SAP projects can be classified as it is an implementation project it is a support project it is a testing project so usually uh, SAP, it, you can also come across upgrade uh, rollout which development so these are some kind of projects uh, you would come across uh, in the current scenario especially if you are working for a multi if you get a chance to work for multinational companies you would come across these uh, jargons so implementation would have already been done in that company but they would require your support or your help for the in these particular areas so see any implementation project starts with a business blueprint after the business blueprint uh, what happens in the business blueprinting is that in the business blueprinting you understand let's say there is a client of yours who who is looking for SAP implementation in their company or they have implemented it in some other plant of their company and they want to replicate it in another plant so it can be a possibility that the other plant has a little different process than the one that is implemented earlier so for that purpose you need to understand the business and create a blueprint like uh, the exact replica of a business so you need to study the business and prepare kind of a, a chart based on the study how is the process going on in the new plant of that company so once you, uh, that is uh, done using in this particular session called as blueprinting session blueprinting session is very important and critical in proper implementation and successful implementation of a particular project so you, you need to the consultants need to thoroughly understand the business process for that so that that means you should have thorough experience into sales you should understand each and every um, stage of a sales cycle thoroughly uh, sales and distribution cycle thoroughly basically you should know how is the product uh, distributed basically how it is it reaches the customer basically you should understand the documents involved in the sales processes okay and the important integrities that are there in the sales cycle so once you know that uh, even though if you have worked in a particular industry sector you could use your knowledge that you have learned in that particular industry sector and apply it to other industries as well so even though the other industries might have a different process like let's say uh, you have you have been working into a manufacturing company and you're working for a you're working as a SAP SD consultant for a project which is into oil and gas so the other difficult there might be uh, the processes are a little different little different as compared to the manufacturing process so you can although apply the knowledge that you have gained over there and start working in that project as well so because you have the basic idea of how it is how it goes so understand the business process in the business blueprint create a print or create a replica of that business process and, uh, and study it and so that you could be easily able to configure the configure the SAP system so once you understand the business blueprint next is gap analysis In gap analysis, you study uh, what gaps are there in the system and uh, what gaps are then in the sales process that the client wants and the SAP. So what are the features of the SAP system? So a consultant is someone who knows uh, at the thorough sales cycle. He has worked into sales, or probably he has been working into sales, and um, he has knowledge of all the stages that are there in the sales cycle. And secondly, he could easily understand the business process of his client easily understand the sales cycle of his client and, and another part is that he should be able to correlate with the SAP technical knowledge that he has gained through his experience or the certification that he has done or the training that he has uh, attended on SAP sales and distribution so his knowledge of understanding the business blueprint that is uh, the business sales cycle with the SAP sales cycle and he should be able to uh, compare these two scenarios and understand what would be the gaps that arise out of this okay so let's say there is a certain uh, <clears throat> process that the client uses 
but that particular feature is not available in standard SAP so there is a concept called a standard SAP and uh, that standard SAP functionality if it's not being used by the client and the client uses something else in that case you have the feature <coughs> SAP gives you the feature of enhancing uh, that functionality to, the, to meet the client's requirement or you could change the functionality in such a fashion that it meets the client's requirement so this way you compare uh, the tech uh, the SAP knowledge that you have sales and distribution knowledge that you have with the business process sales and distribution cycle and this way you could be able to derive the gaps out of it so that is done in this understanding the gap finding out the gaps noting down the gaps and uh, the solutions for these gaps so business blueprinting gap analysis <coughs> <coughs> business blueprinting gap analysis and after this you get into uh, the actual changes okay so you make start making the changes after identifying the gaps after studying the business process you start making the changes if, if in case you have identified certain functionalities which is not available in standard SAP you will ask you'll take help of a, a, a person or who is working into a BAP like in a BAP consultant from your team and ask him to develop certain uh, functionality which should be helpful for the business or the client and uh, which would satisfy his requirement so you should ask him to design it you need to provide him a logic like this is what should happen when you do this particular action into the system so if you click on this button it should display you the this particular functionality so that is what you should tell the BAPR and provide him a logic to achieve that so once that logic is provided uh, the ABAP consultant would uh, prepare a code and uh, that code would be incorporated into the SAP system so that the system behaves as the client requires okay so it behaves in the same way as the client's businesses sales cycle goes okay because the standard SAP doesn't satisfy it 